Imagine your feet growing their own shoes. A population of carefully selected microorganisms have learned to use the mechanical energy of walking, the sunlight, the humidity, and the sweat of your feet to repair and grow themselves. These living shoes are able to adjust their shape and thickness to maintain the most comfortable possible fit. On top of it all, they should never need to be thrown away and replaced. My name is Margarita Stajkova. I'm Associate Professor in Biophysics at Durham University. I'm also a Royal Society Apex Fellow. My research focuses on the self-assembly of biological cells. I'm also interested in how cells interact physically with their environment. Understanding how these processes work and having means to interfere with them is one way towards the design of the living shoes. If we look back at the early Earth, it was covered in something that we call primordial soup, which contained chemical elements and molecules like fat, proteins and RNA. Through billions of years, they assembled into more complex structures, which eventually gave rise to the first cells. Bacteria evolved about 2.5 billion years ago, and since then life has continued to diversify and evolve into the complex shapes we see nowadays. As part of the Royal Society Apex Award, I have been looking at how bacteria interact with membranes. In order to do that, we have created artificial capsules made of lipid membranes and have filled them with living bacteria. The first thing we saw in the lab was that these capsules were capable of self-propelling through the solution. The bacteria inside were deforming the lipid membranes in tiny tubes. And when we look with microscope, we saw that these tubes are rotating in a helical fashion powered by the bacteria inside. So the whole tube acts like a tail for the capsules and is able to propel it through the solution. So on one hand, we want to understand how this system has helped the evolution on Earth. On the other hand, we want to create artificial cells or biohybrid systems that can move, multiply, and grow the same way as biological cells do. This research is part of the effort to create artificial life from the bottom up. The next step would be to make these capsules grow and divide like biological cells. The Royal Society Apex Award and the Institute of Advanced Studies at Durham helped me to open this research project. I started collaborating with the sociologist Iago Moreira and we began examining the motivation and the aims of the research and questioning the implications of it. The Living Shoe is a really good example to think about a set of technologies, the self-healing concrete or the mushroom leather, other examples that are in development. And the, it allows us to think about those technologies from the point of view of them having a variety of advantages, like less waste, less cost, being renewable, etc. But also, when Margarita and I started collaborating, we found out that we shared a belief that living materials poses very important and unavoidable questions about how we live with materials in society. A living shoe could react to its own use in a way that is not predicted. So it could start producing some kind of enzyme that attacks your own skin. And that would be probably kind of a worst case scenario, but it is good to think with. Modern materials have high levels of conformity and predictability throughout their life cycle. Living material would be likely to change and they would require some maintenance and engagement. For a long time, we have used materials that are, you buy a shoe, you use the shoe, you use the shoe until it's not usable anymore, and then you throw it out. This is the basis of what we call the consumer culture or consumer society. Living materials are much more aligned with the circular economy, with reuse, with maintenance, with recycling, rather than that industrial, I guess, legacy of design by dump. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
since we are dealing with living systems, they would be prone to evolution and change. Therefore, instead of design and forget, we must actually acknowledge that we are entering a collaboration of a sort. As we know, we had a long history of symbiotic relationships with animals, dogs, horses, etc. People forget that you know when you have a horse that works a cart horse, you, you wouldn't just put it away. You know, you need to feed it, for, you know, make its bed, etc. You need to care for it for it to be ready for the next day. And obviously, because of standardization, industrialization, we forgot about those relationships. We saw those animals much more in an exploitative relationship, so we forgot what we give to them and the exchanges that make sense in a symbiotic relationship, which is a different relationship from just a purely exploitative relationship. Our discussions helped us step away from the technocratic scientific approach, which manipulates and uses microorganisms in order to improve our lives. Instead, we want to use our living capsules as a prototype of a living material to see whether it's possible to implement the very processes of life, evolution, adaptation, the life cycle of the organism, into the design of the materials we will be using. One of the challenges of these materials is that we're talking about them in the wild, so to speak, outside the lab. And so the interaction would be much more complex. We need to maintain and perhaps reinforce even more a relationship between what happens in the lab and everyday users. And that is fundamental to develop these technologies. The living materials provide us with this tremendous opportunity to live in a closer relation with our environment but they also contain a lot of challenges. The question becomes, are we ready to make this next step? <laughs>